I noticed this uh, mass of flowers a couple of days ago, right in my neighborhood. So I brought the chair out and this will be our location for today. I'm gonna see if I can find some cool angles. We got the light poking out to the trees right now, which is quite nice. So this should be really good. What's up folks? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Carl. I'm a travel photographer and today I'll be sharing with you my exact workflow of how I take self portraits like this. If you stick along to the end of the video, I share with you a little trick that I use to give my photos a little more dimension and texture as well. So you're going to want to stick around for that. <laughs> I got a new mic. Right now in Atlanta, it's actually the middle of spring. Almost every single cherry blossom tree is lit up and covered in flowers. So I'm gonna take advantage of the cherry blossoms and the flower blossoms, and I'm gonna go outside and try and take a couple of portraits just to get my creative juices flowing. Even before I step outside my door, I'm gonna log onto Pinterest and look for a couple of photo examples so that I can have a photo idea perfectly dialed in. Because I'm not as experienced in front of the camera, I use it to come up with interesting poses to make my photos look more dynamic and interesting. All right, so these are a couple of my favorites that I saved from the last hour or so scrolling on Pinterest looking for the right photo. I like this one because I like the idea of him holding the flower in front of his eye. I really like the textures in this one and I like the dreamy feel in this one. So I'm gonna try and use all of these photos, pulling it, pulling it up on my phone to kind of give me an idea of what I want. Ooh, this is cool too. I'm not necessarily going to be copying exactly a certain photo that I see, but I'm going to use the whole atmosphere from the whole entire pin board that I create for the photo shoot to kind of give myself a mental note of how I want the photos to turn out. So how I'm seeing this, I want it to be dreamy because I'm looking at these two, I'm, I'm getting a nice little dreamy vibe from it. So I want to edit it in a very light, dreamy, pastel kind of vibe. I definitely want some interesting textures on there, like this one here. and then. Uh, I might use something to cover my eye or like draw attention to my eye just to make a photo a little more interesting. Here are the tools that I'm gonna use for this photo shoot. I'm gonna need a tripod, a camera, preferably one with a flip out screen, an interesting piece of clothing. I'm gonna use a, maybe a linen shirt or something, a water bottle to stay hydrated when I'm shooting, and of course a healthy dose of stoke because God knows we need it during this weird time. So yeah, let's go shoot. Okay, so made it here bright and early <laughs> on location, literally in my front yard. I uh, have the props that I, that I had prepped up, two shirts. A problem that I encountered a lot when I started shooting self-portraits was dialing in my focus as perfectly as I wanted. For some reason, when I shot the photos, I'd, get, I'd, I'd be so happy with the photos and I'd get back to the computer, time to edit, and I find out the focus is just right in front of my face or like right behind my head and I'd be so disappointed and photos would be unusable. What I started doing a couple of years ago to combat that is to actually put something in my place so that I can focus on the thing. That way when I sit down or when I stand in the spot, I'll be tack sharp and perfectly in focus every single time. I'm gonna be using this water bottle that I use to stay hydrated and that's gonna help me make sure that my focus is perfect every single time. I've also found that it might help to leave a little bit of negative space around the edges. That way you have the opportunity to recrop and crop the image how you want to. This is a very, very useful tip. Okay, so despite the fact that I have the 5D Mark IV, which is a much better camera than the camera that I'm actually using, I prefer to use this Rebel T7i because it has this flip out screen, which is super handy when it comes to shooting yourself and seeing yourself so that you're making sure that your composition is perfectly dialed in and as tight and as clean as possible. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set it on uh, on remote trigger, remote timer. So that means that way I have I have enough time to make it all the way out to my shot while the camera's beeping. I can look at my composition and uh, work on my poses. Finally, before I leave a location, I like to grab a couple of texture images. That way I'm able to superimpose them on my actual final portraits, which helps to give my portraits more dimension and more texture when I'm editing. Super, super handy tip. I'll show you exactly how I do it, but first 
I'm gonna get through this edit and show you exactly what I do. All right, so first off, I'm gonna sift through these images here looking for a couple of my favorites. I actually ended up shooting around maybe 600 photos, uh, but this is undoubtedly my favorite photo. Look how <laughs> unimpressed I look, I'm just <laughs> unimpressed. And then uh, for the edit, I just pasted one of my favorite presets on there. Luckily, I shot a little wider than I needed to shoot. I preferred to have the ability to crop in post rather than be restricted to like a more zoomed in frame. So I, I shot wide and it actually did come in very handy because I, I prefer looking at the photo like, like this, landscape like this. All right, the next step is probably to jump into Photoshop and start using the spot removal tool to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff in the image just to clean up the image and make it look a lot cleaner. If you want to see another in-depth tutorial on how I use this content aware fill tool, you just click the annotation right here and it'll take you to a past video that I made that shows you how you can use it. All right, so this is basically the finalized image. I really like how it looks. I like how the whole frame is filled with the flowers. I like the color and like the textures. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this photo and then turn it into black and white and give it a little bit of texture and import that into my image in Photoshop and apply this texture just to give my photo a little more character and a little more depth. Okay, so I imported that black and white photo into Photoshop, superimposed it onto my image where I wanted it to be, and then used the screen blending mode. And what the screen blending mode does is it takes away the darker parts of an image and enhances the lighter part of an image that you're using to blend onto your certain photo. What this means is that the highlights of our blending image here that we've put above our original photo are gonna be accentuated and gonna create this speckly, nice texture, grungy effect that I think can help give your photos a lot more dimension and a lot more depth. I really, really like this effect. Now that I have it dialed in just the way I want, I'm gonna take my brush and brush away at the layer mask, revealing parts of the image that I think should be revealed through. Uh, I'm gonna probably adjust the brightness and contrast of that blending layer just a little bit, and maybe even the opacity just to make sure that I have the texture dialed in perfectly before I think I'm completely done. I'm gonna hit the save button, jump back in a Lightroom, probably add a little bit of fade, and this is the final image. Okay, so if you compare this final image that I got to the original Pinterest board, you can see where I was able to draw some of those parallels and those inspirations from. Maybe from the light texture of the image to the whole floral effect to covering my eye. And you can see that I was able to come up with something that was super unique while at the same time maintaining the whole idea that I wanted to maintain. Okay guys, uh, that's the video. If you in hey, wait, 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 wait. Don't, go, don't, don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed the video, you gotta go down now and smash the like button. You gotta do it for the algorithm. I know, I know we're saying we don't smash on this channel, but guys, these are tough times, okay? We gotta get smashed. And smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. That way you're notified when next I create a new video. Uh, really, really appreciate you for watching this video and sticking around with me for the, the last couple of minutes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.